the vibrant economy of Washington. This week, Republican congressmen argued the only path to statehood would be through a constitutional amendment. But that's not all it needs. There's a bunch more that makes a state other than just that title. We spoke with D.C. Shadow Senator Paul Strauss, who looks back at history to see what that timeline would look like for D.C. statehood. The first petition for Alaskan statehood was filed in 1912, and it wasn't until 1959 that Alaskans finally got stated. It's interesting because so many of the parallels between D.C. statehood had followed Alaska's struggle. After Alaska's Statehood Act was signed back in July of 1958, six months later, it became a state. Then there's the question about what infrastructure is needed to make a state. The transition from federal district to U.S. state is really going to be pretty simple because we have taken a lot of steps already. We've ratified a constitution, we've secured the boundaries, and we have a transition plan in place. Plus, D.C. would then need its own legislature, courts, and capital. As for the name change, Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton says that would not be necessary. Fortunately, the district has found a way to avoid a name change. It will be called Washington, D.C., but it will stand for Washington Douglas Commonwealth. Because Washington, D.C. is the seat of power for the federal government, this would create its own unique challenges. Currently, the 23rd Amendment gives the district three electoral votes in the race for president. But GW law professor Thomas Colby says this would need to be repealed in order to pass a statehood bill. If you do create a state out of D.C. and you reduce the seat of government just to the buildings right around the mall, technically at that moment, that new seat of government, those buildings right around the mall, they get three votes for the president which is not what anyone wants to have happen. A lot would need to happen in order for D.C. to become the 51st state. So we asked D.C. Shadow Senator Paul Strauss what we would gain from this. And the state of Washington, D.C. is going to function pretty much like the District of Columbia did, except that it's going to have full federal representation. And more importantly, for so many of us, the self-determination we need to pass our own laws.